Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today, I'd like to start out by straight going to Scripture. So if you would, please go to Matthew. And we're going to look at Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to look at verse 10. I'm going to read a couple of these scriptures, through, uh, verse 10 through 13. That's Matthew 13, 10 through 13. Here we have, And the disciples and came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of heaven, but to them it has not been, give, it has not been given. For whoever has, to him more will be given, and he will have abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. So generally, we use this section of scripture when we're trying to explain the knowledge that God gives us about the calling and who he's calling now and who he's going to call in the future. But I'd like to look at this through a different lens today. Christ used communication here to mask what his true meaning was to a lot of the people who heard it. They heard what he said, but they just didn't understand. He could do this because Christ had a full understanding of how communication works and what he could say to them and be heard by the people who he chose to hear. We must understand how communication works at its fullest. It's a great tool that God has provided us with, and if used appropriately, we can do many things with it. If we aren't careful, we can mishandle communication, and it could potentially destroy relationships, and it can harm people at the same time, uh, even if they're close to us. Sometimes things that we say can be very detrimental to the relationships that we've built. It took many, many years to build together. Communication is much more than just the capability to talk. The first aspect in communication is actually the ability to listen. If we're not listening to people, we're not caring for them. And I'm not referring to the just hearing what people are saying. A lot of us can hear, but you don't really get the full understanding and depth of what they're actually meaning. Imagine that you're in one of the rooms in your house. You're either watching TV, reading a book. You're uh, you're just not fully involved with everything. You're you're maybe playing some video games, relaxing a little bit, and you hear somebody from the other room call you. And you hear it, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay. A few minutes later, whether it was your spouse or a brother or a sibling, uh, you come, they come around the corner, and they kind of make eye contact with you. And you, you kinda, you're still focused on what you're doing, but you catch them out of the corner of your eye, you look at them, you make eye contact, and then you realize you had no idea what they said. But you answered so quickly, you, you know, you, you start scanning the room, trying to think, trying to catch a glimpse of something that might trigger, this is what they said, but nothing's working. You finally give up, you say, I've got nothing, I'm sorry, I did not hear you, can you please tell me what you said? And so you heard, you heard her say, you heard them say words to you, but you, you didn't know, <laughs> yeah, it, it's most of us guys, yeah, I, I know, we, we get that a lot. We, weren't, we don't truly listen at times. You know, you get side, sidetracked, and it's not just the hearing the words. It's actually understanding what they're wanting, and, and that's, a, that's where we have to be careful. It's beneficial to be quick to listen, but slow to speak. So if you look at Proverbs 18, 13, I think this wraps us up nicely. That's Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. And it says... He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. So here we see, without listening first, we could embarrass ourselves. It's not recognizing what the words were. and We could, we could uh, look foolish if we're not careful. Listening will also give us time to do the second aspect I want to look at today, and that's actually weighing our words before we respond. So if we're taking the time to listen, that's giving us additional time to actually think about what we're going to say to them and how we're going to communicate. And what I mean by weighing our words is 
to strive to make a conscious effort every time, actually evaluate the words that we're going to use, not only what we're hearing from them, but what we're actually going to say back to them. By weighing our words, we're able to ensure that the words that we use aren't sharp and that they're not used in a reckless manner. Like I said in the beginning, that a lot of times there can be a lot of hurt feelings from things that we say, and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Many of these relationships have come over years and years of knowing someone, and it's, I've seen relationship quickly end because of just a few conversations, and it's tough to see. Using timely and appropriate words will, reward, will create a rewarding conversation, a conversation that all participants will grow and develop from. You can, you can grow off of each other and develop together with the right constructive conversations. Be supportive with your words, positive, up, and use uplifting words. All of these things will help us trend in the right direction as to what God expects out of us. And remember that it's not always just the ones in the conversation that gain something. Uh, we heard a message a few months back where uh, it was talked about when we're in conversation, some of the kids had gone home and brought up things that they'd heard people talking about. We, we don't realize that they're in hearing distance, but in our conversations, they pick up stuff from us, and they, they can, they, they're very quick to learn what, how, how we communicate with other people, and they tend to follow that same trend. So we want to be that good example for them. So work diligently in analyzing your words. We can find another, pro, uh, another proverb, 15, that I think has a good meaning here. Proverbs 15, and that's verse 28. It's only a couple pages over. And it says, The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. And that's the New International Version that I pulled this from. The heart of the righteous weighs its answers, but the mouth of the wicked gushes evil. It's not that it's just evil it gushes evil it's overflowing with evil so let's take the time to actually weigh what we're using as powerful as words can actually be we can't just stop there though i found some research by a um, a man named albert morabian he's an emeritus professor from ucla and he concluded that words alone only make up actually 7% of our communication, 7%. So that's a huge amount of left in other areas. The second part of that was 38% comes from tone of voice and inflection. So together, that's 45%. So tone and inflection are still audible. So you put the 7% and the 38, and that's still not even half of our communication coming from some other source. And that last bit is all facial expression, posture, and gestures. So our body language communicates more than half of what we're saying to people. So that's why this is the third aspect that I think is very important when we're talking about communication. His research, research here shows that nonverbal is the most important part of this. So we take the time to make sure the words that we're using after we listen to them, and then we also have to use our, our body language. Simply withholding the words is meaningless when our body language communicates aggression or anger. So imagine you're in another conversation. It's a, it's a friendly conversation at first. You're not really debating each other, but you're just having a discussion about something. And as you guys talk, the person just starts peering at you. you know, gets a little bit closer and is just looking at you. And you're not sure at first, but they kind of acting a little bit angry or upset at something you said. It's not a tough topic, but you're, you keep going with them, and they just appear again. And so you, you kind of back up a little bit, try to lighten, give a little bit of space, and then they cross their arms. They're looking even deeper at you, and you're like, what did I say? Where, what did I miss? Their body language is given off that they're upset, and you did something wrong, and you're trying to process, what did I do, as you're trying to have this conversation. So you guys end, and you think they're mad at you, so you're, you're worried that they're upset about something that you guys were discussing. Later out, you find out later that actually in order for them to focus on conversations, they just have to intently listen to what you're actually saying. They weren't angry, but their body language was saying, I'm upset. So that's where communication long term, if we know our, the people we're having conversations with, we'll understand 
what people are actually doing, and there won't be as much confusion. They were completely unaware that they were actually being perceived as angry. You took it that way, but they had no idea. And oftentimes, that's where the barrier comes in. When there's a miscommunication between the two, that can be created, and neither one really knows why until you actually have another, another conversation explaining, okay, this is what happened, and you find out there was no big deal about anything. Communication can break down if we aren't aware of all of its aspects and using all of those when we're having conversations with brethren. Developing our communication skills will allow us to better serve each other. It takes time to get to know each other. It takes time and dedication to have the conversations and just be friendly. God's provided us communication as a tool, and understanding it at a deeper level is the key to positive communication.